In my last video, we went to St. Louis, Missouri, and we took a look at a Catholic church, which is not the tradition that I'm a part of, but a Catholic church called Little Flower Church. The place was really neat. It's built in the round, and we were there at sort of an odd time. I thought we would probably need to film that video later, but the gentleman who showed us around, Father Herzog, was like, no, nah, let's just do it right now. And so we, we did. We just went and looked at things going on in the church while people were also setting up for a funeral that was going to happen later that day. And it gave the whole tour and the whole conversation with him a different flavor than maybe any I've experienced before in any of these other church visits. And I really like it. I'm really grateful that he insisted on walking around and taking a look at things right then. I think that communicates a lot and it did give me a different sense of things. But I went and got some lunch while they did the services and everything else and came back later on in the afternoon when everything was really quiet there. And it was pretty I was struck by the space, moved by the space. There was a lot to think about there. And usually after I visit a church, I like to sit down with you here and share some of my thoughts on it. But I thought it'd be cool to just walk around the church since it was quiet and empty and reflect on what we had seen together right there. So let's bounce back over to Little Flower Church in St. Louis, Missouri, and consider what it was like to check out this particular church. Obviously, a huge part of what a video like this is about is that I am not this, but I am. I, I, I believe that I am a part of the universal church, the one that's been there from the beginning, even though institutionally I'm a part of a different church than this one. I know Catholics disagree with me on that, and that's a place where I'm perfectly at peace to agree to disagree. But I'm so much more excited about all the places where we do agree. Like, for example, the Christ is the centerpiece of the church, the chief cornerstone of this whole thing, the, the whole redemptive plan of God, the life of the church, the motion of history revolves around Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And so when I walk in the door and the first thing I see is this, and Catholic or not, that's God, that's God in the flesh. That's exciting for me to walk in and, and feel collegiality with another community of believers who are worshiping the exact same God and, and trying to figure out what it looks like to live a life of dedication to Him. What I think is really cool about a church like this, though, is that in ways that my tradition lacks, there are theological underpinnings and structural underpinnings here that allow a building like this to tell the complete story in architecture and layout of faith, tell that complete story of faith in a way that most churches in my tradition just can't. You come in the door and the same water that's used for baptism is right there in these little alcoves back here and back here. Within Catholic thought, that's how you enter the church. In my tradition, we don't baptize infants, we baptize people who profess Christian faith as an adult or somebody who's old enough to articulate it. But still, that's kind of the point where you take a public stance to say, I'm a part of this kingdom, I'm a part of this community of faith, this family of faith. So there is sort of your entry point. And then you come in and what you see all around you is the community life of the Christian. You see these little reminders of heaven, the choir, the music, the dome that takes your eyes upwards. And even though that's not something that you're experiencing now, part of the Christian life in this world is to anticipate that. And it's all here, all kinds of little things that give you glimpses of what that's about or what that might be like. Then you've got these four chapels that are all representative of different aspects of a life of devotion to God, and the weird ups and downs that come with that. And particularly what stands out is this chapel here, a chapel that is set aside for a reminder of where the mortal life is going and a reminder that the death and resurrection of Christ is what conquers sin and death and that him going there first to death and to life after demonstrates that we can trust him to deliver on the promises of God for life after death for the Christian. But then in the meantime, you also have, you know, if that sounds all a little too flowery and all a little too perfect and flawless, you've also got these spaces here and here that are dedicated to what happens when you screw things up. And these are confessionals. It is an architectural assumption. I mean, it's an institution that says, this isn't going to go smoothly. Things are gonna go sideways. Relationships are gonna break because of stupid stuff other people did, because of stupid stuff you do. 
You're going to do things you wish you hadn't done, say things you wish you hadn't said. You're going to get into places that you don't even know how you got there or why you're thinking that way. But life outside the church, life inside the church, is still touched by sin and humanity. And so this space being ever present, inviting anybody who's here to maybe consider whether they need to go in there and have a conversation, is a way that the Catholic tradition reminds us of our frailty and our need for God. Again, all of these things might get framed a little bit differently in a Protestant tradition, and maybe I'm framing them all a little bit Protestantly, but these are the things that strike me as a very familiar set of, of uh, commonly held aspects of faith. This tells a familiar story to my own experience of what it's like to go through the Christian life and, and all that goes into that good, bad, weird, uh, ceremonial, repetitive, um, all alike. And so while acknowledging that this is not my exact tradition and while acknowledging that you know, I could sit with Father Herzog and we'd probably have fun talking about lots of theological details where we disagree, the building tells a story of faith that is very familiar to me and that's encouraging in my own journey of faith. I hope you've enjoyed checking it out too.